Hey, what is up guys and gals of YouTube? BJ Dell back with another Procreate video. Uh, today's video though, any of the techniques that you see, you can apply them towards any graphic design program. So if you've got Photoshop, if you've got GIMP, anything that uses layers, you're gonna be able to use today's principles and transfer and apply those to any other graphic design program. Uh, but what I'm gonna be focusing on is telling you how I use three different techniques to create visually striking designs and mainly focused on the line work. So the first one, we're just gonna create a heavy black outline with the brush tool. Uh, second one, we're going to then use that same design that we did and add a white outline so that it has some contrast if you decide to put a heavily black inked outline design on a dark background or a dark t-shirt. And then third and finally, we're gonna take the lines and totally remove them from the design, creating a negative space, which then the dark background or dark t-shirt is going to show through that negative space and actually work as the line layer. So let's go ahead and hop on into it. So I'm going to start this video pretty much from scratch and just kind of show you how I, I go from start to finish. Uh, and then we'll talk about the, the different line options. So I usually start out my sketches just with a blue line. Um, with it being October and Halloween, let's just do a quick skull here. When I'm sketching, I don't really worry too much about getting everything perfect. Um, I'll usually worry about that once I actually go back in to do the lines and do the inking on it. So I just kind of get the basic feel for where I want everything and kind of worry about touching it up as I go later. So kind of keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be perfect the, the first time around. So I uh, get everything pretty much in the, the spot that I want it. From here, go back up to my layers menu and then Go over here to the magic wand and drop the opacity down so I can just barely see it, but it's going to work as a, a guide once I start laying the, the lines here. So make a new layer on top of the lines there, and then I'm just going to go ahead and start to go in here and start inking. And you'll see as I'm doing this, I erase quite a bit until I get the perfect line that I'm looking for. Kind of adjust the uh, the thickness too until I get it right. What I look for is I really like to get a nice ending stroke down here, which you can always go back in with the eraser too and kind of sharpen that up to get a little bit sharper tip. So just kind of continue around to get the right look. So one thing I love about Procreate is just how easy it is to undo something with the two finger tap rather than having to go up to a whole nother menu and hit an undo and it's not bad if you're you know on a, a desktop and using Photoshop and can just use keyboard shortcuts but it makes a little bit of pain when you've got to go up to a separate menu every time in some of these programs on the, the iPad so So I'm going just going back in with the eraser and touching it up, get those lines nice and sharp. It's got a good taper at the end. Makes it a little bit more visually interesting. We're doing a skull, I know it's close to Halloween, but I've always been a sucker for like horror-based designs i love drawn skulls and frankenstein's monster and stuff like that it's always been one of my kind of go-to's over the years you think creepy but always kind of put some fun little like cute spin on it combine the two now with this being a longer stroke up here at the top i'm gonna go ahead and go into the 
menu here for the the brush and streamline it what this does it kind of steadies your stroke as you go around so you get a nice even line and you don't get any jitters like I said love the erase I will use it constantly until I get it looking perfect of course one of the uh, other benefits of working with digital is you're not stuck with a line that you just drew like you are with pen and ink so a lot more forgiving yeah looks good enough I'll drop that streamline when you that's the one thing I don't like when you switch back and forth between like an eraser and a uh, the brush uh, if you've got streamline on it actually sticks so you got to go back in and manually turn it off I wish they didn't bring it over from one to the other Okay, close enough. Like I said, this is just going to be a quick kind of tutorial. It's more about the, the lines and how I do that. So this isn't going to be some long, drawn-out illustration class. So, All right, so we're good there. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete the lines there. So we'll kill those, the, uh, the original blue layer sketch that we did. So now we've got the lines. I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer and then hold and drag this underneath. So my line layer is on the top. Um, and then I'm going to click on here again and set this as a reference. So I know I've talked about this in one of my previous videos. This is kind of nice because it actually will let you click and drag to fill in colors and use uh, that top line layer as a reference to where to put the colors, which is kind of cool. So we're gonna do like a red here. There we go. So I'll brighten it up a little bit. Um, the cool thing about this and why I don't actually put the colors in that line layer there. Number one, uh, it's going to become a little bit more evident once we go and talk about the lines themselves in these next few steps. Uh, but then also if you're adding in uh, shadows and uh, highlights to it, you don't have to worry about going over top of that line layer with your highlights because that white's going to fill in on top of there. So this lets you keep it all underneath. So we've got the uh, flat slate in. Go ahead and make another layer. And we're going to do shadows on this layer. So we'll just hit this. Usually what I do, start with black. Um, I'll get one section done like that. Then go up to your opacity here. And then just move your pencil down here to you get a decent look in opacity for that shadow. Um, you can also add a, a shadow layer. Sometimes I do it if you want to uh, not just use the one color and you want to kind of hand pick what colors your shadow, shadows are going to be. You can always do that on another layer. Uh, using the black like this is nice because it's going to use this red color for, for example on this one. It's going to use that um, for your, your reference for what this black's going to do since it's sitting on top. Let's say that I had certain areas of this that were different colors, it's just gonna darken in that specific color. So you're doing all your shadows on one layer and it's just adapting to whatever's underneath it. So that way you don't have to go through and pick, let's say you've got you know five different base colors on your, uh, on your flats. Uh, you don't have to go through and pick five different shadow colors and then go back through and pick five different highlight colors. This kind of does the work for you. Um, sometimes the design's gonna kind of need uh, that and, and go in and hand picking them. It is gonna make it a little bit more interesting. You can get some, some cool effects, but for the most part, this is how I do it. it saves time and the results come out pretty good. Uh, it's more like a uh, like the cell shading technique. So let's go through here and hit a few more. Always keep in mind uh, for the, the shadows of where your light's coming in from. Um, of course, in this design, I've got it set to where the light's coming in from this way. 
so everything's going to be on this left hand side the only exception is in here since this is kind of more sunken in uh, it's going to have that so all right it's pretty good there uh, i am going to go back on here to the line layer do some erasing in here so i can get some a little bit of colors in the eyes so it looks a little bit more three-dimensional has a little bit more depth I'll do that and we'll do it to the uh the nose cavity as well and then we're going to go back in and I'll just fill that in real quick all right cool so we got that now let's go back in new layer and let's do some white for the highlights let's get in the light source is coming from this right side so everything's going to be bouncing off this side I might do a tutorial later just talking about um, using light source and, and kind of figuring out where to put the stuff I'm sure there's other videos on YouTube that you can probably look up if you need help figuring that out there's a lot of books on the subject too I mean it's you know one of the the principles of of art or painting or drawing or anything so there's a lot of information out there and once again go up here opacity drop it down Get a nice glow. Don't want it too bright. Uh, the the highlighting is is one of the exceptions. Like shadows, you can do that all on one layer. Um, highlighting sometimes you might have to make a couple of layers if you use this white technique for highlighting. Reason being is the uh, the highlight's not going to look the same uh, on a light color as it is a dark color. So let's say I had a a very bright yellow section of this the same design um it's not going to show up as well on the bright yellow as it does on the dark and you know adjusting it one way is going to make it too dark or too light on one and and you're not going to be able to see it so sometimes you'll have to do two let's fill this in with some shadow all right and this one here all right so that's pretty much our design there uh, what I'll do is I'll turn off this background too, just to see. Sometimes if you're working on a white background and your highlights go out of your lines, you're not going to be able to see that they're out uh, since you got that to a white one. So I'll turn that off and just double check it. So we look good here. So this is finished design. You could throw this up on a uh, t-shirt, um, throw it up on a poster. Uh, mainly I want to talk about t-shirt design today and the uh, the different options there and why I go uh, with with certain options so uh, I think it's pretty well known in, in t-shirt design black and dark colors seem to always sell better than light colors uh, with this design if we threw it on a black background what it's going to do is you're not going to be able to see the uh, the lines they're going to drop out now this looks okay on here but once you get it onto a t-shirt and the printing process takes effect um, that black of those lines is not going to be as black as the t-shirt so you kind of get this weird um, kind of glare effect on it which doesn't really look all that great uh, if you put this on a white t-shirt or a light t-shirt obviously your lines are going to be right there you can see them stands out they're thick they're bold they look awesome so this is one example just straight black lines throw it on a light t-shirt you can throw it on a black like i said um but you're going to get that weird glare effect and you're going to it's just going to look a little off so uh that's one option the second option that i do is uh you can actually add a line around this to make it stand out uh one of the bad things about procreate it does not have uh, a built-in stroke option uh, so I always, if I need to do it, I always take a design from, from the iPad. I throw it into Photoshop. It's a one-step process. Uh, I'm not going to edit this and show you because it's super easy. If you just go up, uh, bring your bring your design in, go up to your top menu, go to edit, 
go down to stroke. It's going to bring up the stroke menu. Uh, set that stroke to white and usually play around with the, the size. Usually I'll do anywhere from like 10 to 15 pixels. Um, and once you hit that, it's just going to automatically, the program's just going to add a white stroke around your design. Uh, so it's going to look awesome. If you put it on a dark color, it's going to pop more. You've got that kind of contrast between the, the light and the dark uh, to make your lines stand out. Um, now on Procreate, there are ways, I guess, around it that you could do it. Um, the, I guess the simplest, but the most time consuming at the same time is, uh, of course, if you go to your white here and we're going to add a new layer, put it at the very back behind everything. And if you set your, your brush to streamline, that's going to be, uh, the best to get a, a nice, uh, s stroke line to it. But it's going to require you tracing around your entire thing. And of course here, it's not going to look mechanical. It's not going to look as good as Photoshop because you're going to have like here, you'll see the, the line's a little thinner here. It's a little thicker. So it's going to be hard uh, to get a uniform line across the entire thing. Um, you know, sometimes some designs that might actually look good to have it not perfect. Um, but this is one way you can do it if you want to stay in Procreate. Another way you can do it, and with a design like this, it's not going to be perfect, but you, you can get away with it. If you have a, a more complex design, let's say that it's a character with you know legs that are kind of spread apart and you've got that, it's not going to work. With this being more of a solid design, you could do it this way with some of the new features in Procreate. Um, so to do that, we're going to go ahead and I'll delete this out so we can go back. Uh, we're going to make a new layer. We're going to drop it behind here. Now, um, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to take this, actually, to make this easier, for right now, we're going to combine all these. Okay. And then we're going to duplicate this layer. So now you've got two of this exact same thing here. Now on this one, the bottom one, we're going to select this layer and then make sure your white's up here. And then we're going to fill this layer. So now you have a white layer directly behind the skull layer up here. Now, if we go in here, we're going to go to the, the arrow for our transform. And warp is one of the new features that they added with uh, one of the most recent updates with Procreate. So we're going to go ahead and hit the warp. And then see you'll just start to drag out the outside areas of your design you can see it's not perfect you're gonna have areas like this here that this isn't coming up right and if you move it here it's gonna drop there and if you do here and it's gonna be you know wider on, on this side um, to where if you want, you can get it close and then go in by hand. It's going to save you a lot of time. So let's just keep it there. And then if you want to go in by hand on that white layer, uh, you know, you can thicken this up a little bit to make it a little more uniform across and then this back part here. So that's an option. Like I said, it's not going to work with every design you do. It's not going to give you the perfect results. If you've got Photoshop, if you've got another program um, that allows you to, to add that stroke, highly recommend doing that. It's going to save yourself a ton of time. So that's the outline option. And then you'll see here when we throw it, the background to black, see it just pops a lot more. And you've got that, that image that's really going to stand out a lot better. So... So that's an option. Um, let's take this all the way back so we have our layers again. Oh, keep going. Catch up here. Okay, so we've got our layers. Now, this next and final option is, it's not something that you're gonna use all the time, but for uh, something that's it's basic like this that you want a really striking image, works really well. This only works if you're doing dark backgrounds so if you're doing t-shirts it's got to go on a dark color it's got to go on black it's got to go on a dark heather uh, but it's a really fun way to do it and basically what you're going to do is you're going to be using the color of the t-shirt uh, as the lines so you're going to make a negative space in the design that the t-shirt's going to work as the as the uh, lines for it so i'll show you how to do that here 
So we're going to go ahead and just go through each of our layers. We're going to go ahead and select this top line layer each time. So select that, go down to your shadows and clear. Go back up to your lines, select highlights and clear. Go back up to your lines, select and clear out the color. So what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that there's no overlapping parts um, of the highlight shadows or the flats. Uh, so the lines up here are going to take away anything that's that's touching them. Now that we've done that, what we can do is let's change this background color to something darker here. All right. So now just take off the line layer and you're going to see everything disappears. This grays a little bit too light. Uh, everything looks a little bit washed out. So, But if we change it to black, you're going to see it as it changes. So here it looks like it's lined and everything like that. But the cool thing is that there's actually no lines there. The t-shirt is actually doing the work of the lines. Uh, if you change this to, let's say, a purple, you're going to see your lines look like the t-shirt. Um, of course, like right now, this color, eh, not that good. So you might want to play around. The uh, the red that I've got is a little washed out. If we put a darker color in, we're going to select this layer to make sure it just stays in there and fill that in. So you can see just by going uh, with a little bit darker color there, it's going to be a little bolder. Now, uh, one thing that I like to do here, and you might have to, um, depending on how your lines look here, you might have to do some touch-ups uh, down here. So uh, to do that, if you just go back in with the base color of your flats, so if you want to kind of touch up some stuff as you go along. Uh, it's an extra step, but looks kind of cool. Um, throw this back to, to black. Um, and just play around the color, see see what color changing does to the, uh, the overall design. So it looks kind of cool with the, uh, the teal there. This gives you the option too to make more than one uh, design you can change the colors and you'll have multiple designs that you can put on different color t-shirts to uh to give you more options but as you can see that the lines look like they change with the background and that's because there's nothing there the lines are gone it's just an empty negative space that are are doing the work so all right and we'll change this back to black all right, there you go. Three simple ways to do lines. You got the solid black color lines, you've got the white outline, and then you've got the negative space lines. All right, guys, that's it for today. Hopefully you found the video informative. And if you did, please hit that like and subscribe button down at the bottom. And let me know in the comments, what do you guys want to see in the next series of videos? Anything you want me to cover in particular? Also in the comments, let me know what techniques do you guys use in your work? Uh, any of the techniques covered today do you use or do you use something different? Definitely like to know. As for me, I can be found online on Twitter and Instagram at BJDell and also at my website, BJDell.com. So until next time, keep creating.